Have you ever wished that you had more control over the way that your models pose in your stable diffusion images? If you answered yes to this, you're in the right place. I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. Today, I'm going to show you how to use ControlNet with Automatic 1111 so you have full control over the way that your models are posed. Let's jump right into it. Now, you've probably heard of ControlNet, but you might not have any idea how to get started with this. Don't feel bad. I'm going to take you through. It's going to be real simple. The first thing you're going to need to do is install Automatic 1111. If you haven't done that already, I have this handy tutorial that's going to step you through the entire process. All right. In order to get ControlNet running, you need to do a couple things. Hop on over to the Extensions tab. And once you're here, you're going to go to Available and then Load From. This is gonna pull from a URL that's gonna load all the available extensions. Now the extension we're looking for is SD Web UI Control Net. And I'm gonna leave that down in the description. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna search this list of extensions until you find that one. You can also do Control F if you wanna just simply search. That's gonna make your life a little bit easier. Now once you find that in the list, I've already got it installed, that's why it's not in this list. You're going to click the install button over here on the right hand side. That's going to go ahead and start installing the extension. Now that isn't quite all we need to get control net up and running. You see, once you have control net in the UI, there are these two things that are additional pieces of information that need to be loaded. You've got your preprocessors and you've got your models. And this is where a lot of people get stuck and a lot of people get confused. Fortunately, Here's an easy way to do this. Go over to the Hugging Face Web UI Control Net Module Safe Tensors. This URL is below. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna download these Safe Tensor files. These are the models that actually control Control Net. And you can see there are a number of different files in here, and each one of these represents a preprocessor that determines how Control Net is used from the source image to the destination image. Now for the sake of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is we're going to experiment with Annie, Depth, Head, and then you can also download Open Pose. That's kind of a completely separate tutorial, but it's something that you might want to play around with later. All right, where do you put those safe tensor files once you've downloaded them? You're going to go to the directory where you installed Automatic 1111. You're going to open the Stable Diffusion Web UI. You're going to go down to Extensions, and then you're going to find ControlNet, SD Web UI ControlNet. Double click on that and you're going to see a models folder. As you can see, this is where you drop all of your safe tensor files. This is where it's going to be read from at startup. And once you've done that, you need to close the command prompt that's running automatic 1111. And finally, you need to come back in here and you need to double click your web UI batch file. Once that's all loaded, you can jump back into the automatic 1111 web UI and you should have a new section if you scroll down called control net. You'll see that and you can go ahead and expand that. It has a few options here. There's this area for you to upload or drag over an image. You can enable it or disable it. And then you select a preprocessor and a model. So for this case, we're going to select head H E D. Hopefully that's one of the ones that you downloaded. If not, go ahead and download and drag that one on over. The weight and guidance determine how closely your final stable diffusion model is going to adhere to the original image that was provided. Now let's go ahead and load up a test image and I'll show you what we mean. This is just a stock photo I found from a Google search of a woman pointing at something. What we're going to do is go ahead and load that up. And then for our preprocessor, we're going to select H E D and our model, HED FP16. I'm going to set the weight at one and I'm not going to control any of the other settings in here. For the resize mode, I'm going to say scale to fit. And what this is going to do is it's going to scale this image to fit within the size image that we're creating with stable diffusion. From here, I'm going to go ahead and put in a prompt just like always. You can see up here that I'm using stably diffused wild safe tensors checkpoint. This is the stable diffusion model that we're using for this. You could just as easily use Stable Diffusion 1.5, 1.4, or one of your own custom checkpoint files. In the dropdown, I've set the sampler to DPM++ 2M Keras, sampling steps to 30, and the width I bumped up slightly to 768. Now to start with, let's just do one image and one batch count. And I'm going to show you a couple things here. So first of all, we have in our prompt portrait of a beautiful green haired woman with a surprised look on her face. And I would say that this matches not only the image that we gave control net, but also the prompt as well. She's got a nice green hair there. Here's the interesting part. So if you generate one image, you're going to also get back what stable diffusion used from the control net image to control the pose. 
So this is what the HED preprocessor grabbed from that original image that we uploaded into ControlNet. And we can see how that differs once we change this preprocessor. We went with Canny, for example, and we do that for the preprocessor and the model, you're gonna see something completely different here. You notice that this one's fairly detailed, but it has very soft lines. Canny is going to be a lot more hard edged. Let's show you an example. All right, so here's the image that comes back with Canny. You can see the hands are a little bit weird. They're kind of joined together. And there's some other details that are a little bit off. Now, in that case, this is the reason why. And if you look, here's the image that Canny used from ControlNet. And you can see that it has the hands joined together and it loses a lot of detail. This is a much more hard edged version. And so for some things like, you know, architectural, interior design, maybe cars, this might work great. But for something like people, it's hit and miss. I have some results that come back great and others that lose a little bit of that detail. Let's show you one more example. And for this one, we're going to use depth. All right. And for depth, I don't know what's going on with the hands. She's holding something, maybe a weapon of some sort. Not entirely clear. But here's the map that this came out with from the control net image. And you can see that it gives more of a depth map and you lose a lot of the real detailed features. So you're gonna lose completely all of the face shape and everything else. Now, again, this might work great for some images. So really the punchline here is use the preprocessor and the model that's appropriate for the type of stable diffusion image you're trying to generate. And in fact, you might wanna experiment with it if you're not quite getting the results back that you were looking for. So like I was saying, for most of my images that I've been generating recently, I prefer HED, at least when I'm doing things surrounding people. So let's go ahead and try this out with a different source image. So we've got this woman. Let's try this stock photo of this guy with kind of a surprised look on his face and his hands on his face. This is something that I might use for a YouTube video, for example. We'll bump the batch size and the batch count up to two. All right, and here's the depth map that came back for that image. So this is what I would loosely expect the final image to look like. And this is what we got back. I don't know what's quite going on with her bottom teeth, but other than that, this is a pretty good image that came back from that prompt. We can also change the prompt a little bit. So let's say instead of a green haired woman, we're gonna go with a red headed man. We're also going to bump the batch size and the batch count up to two so that we get back a total of four images. All right, and this really looks great for that original image and prompt, although it's still a woman. So let's see what happened there. Portrait of a red haired man with a surprise look on ah, her face. This is why it pays to go back and double check your prompts. We'll change that. See if we get something back now. There we go. And I got to say, these are pretty fantastic. This is something I would totally use for a YouTube thumbnail. And you can see how much it adheres to that original image that we've got down here in control net. Let's try a couple more. This is a great one. Let's see what we get back with this image. All right, definitely not a guy I want to arm wrestle anytime soon. You can see that we didn't change the prompt at all, but look how drastically different the image is. And that's all thanks to control net. Check out that result. And what happens if we do something a little bit out of the ordinary? You can see this is a picture that I found. It's a stock image of this guy's mind being blown. And we'll see what happens when we throw that into control net should be an interesting result to say the least. That's actually really, really cool. Check it out. It looks like it's almost uh, hair like in a couple of these. It's like an explosion on the top of his head. I, that's a really cool effect. Not exactly what I would expect at all. And again, we didn't change our prompt in any way. We just went with the original prompt. If we wanted to change this and let's say we say a red haired woman with a surprise look on her face because we learned that lesson earlier, generate and see what that comes back with. And it looks like we gave her a very interesting new hairstyle. That's pretty awesome. And what happens if we get really weird with this and we drop in something like a cartoon character? I don't know whether I should be terrified or amazed by this. It looks like it applied the outline and the shape to her head. And then obviously you still get some details of SpongeBob all over her face. That's pretty odd, but it does sort of show you the power of this thing and that you can really do anything your creative mind kind of comes up to the, any sort of mishmash of characters. I do want to try one more here with an emoji. What happens if we use the mind blown emoji? Now this has all the basic structures of a face with its eyes and mouth its round shape for its head. What happens when you apply that to a prompt for a person. Wow, that's actually really awesome. Check out those bottom two. It actually, the one on the left, that's the closest to, it's almost a real human, but with their mind actually being blown. It really follows the original image, but 
it overlaid a perfect human face onto that. That's really cool. The top two look almost, they feel sort of like bowling balls or some sort of emoji themselves, but that's kind of a neat effect too. The person sort of bursting through the top of the emoji's head. And this one on the bottom right, that one really has a lot of artistic detail to it. I'd have to use one of these as a thumbnail for this video, actually. Really cool. What's really cool about this is that it gives you that next level layer of control that you hope for when you're building out these awesome stable diffusion images. Hit me up on my Discord server. Show me some of the work that you do with this. I'd love to check it out. That's free to join as always. It's also worth noting that Invoke AI, as of today, doesn't support ControlNet. It's only available in Automatic 11.11 but I expect that's gonna change quite soon. And if you want your mind to continue to be blown by all the cool stuff happening in AI, be sure and hit like and subscribe. We'll see you next time, thanks.